going on your channel too. Yeah. Hey, hey everybody, it's Susan Lynn and it's Jason and Hello. we're here <laughs> and he's, he's broadcasting to his channel too. So it's also Jason's channel and Susan's channel. It's very confusing. How are you, Jason? I am excellent and very happy to finally get to meet you and, and collaborate with you. So I, I'm very happy to be here. Yes, I'm happy you're here. And I just want to apologize right off the bat that uh, my title yeah. kind of made it sound like we were going to be doing personal um, questions. And we're not really doing personal questions. We're really doing the big picture, which frankly... This is more helpful for you. If if I just answer your personal question, you don't really understand the how or the why you got to where you are. And what I'm hoping to do with Jason here is to unlock uh, some really big concepts, not only for you, but for me, about what our soul, I mean, like for real, y'all, why do we choose this planet? What are we doing here and how do we get through it and get an A plus so we don't have to come back? I mean, basically, that's what I want Jason to tell us today. <laughs> I told him I was going to put him on the spot, but, um, you know, we're going to go big picture. But I promise you, this is going to be information that's going to help you. So if you'll just keep an open mind, I'm pretty sure that what we talk about today is going to be very applicable to your personal life issues and applicable in a way that's going to be even better, even more helpful. Because the next time you have an issue and the next time you have an issue, you're going to know kind of a little bit more about why you're having these issues and what you might do about it. Am I selling this too big, Jason? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the idea of the bigger picture. Um, you know, it's not to say that everyone's individual lifetimes aren't important, but... Um, I did, I have noticed just in terms of what some people have asked, they, you know, there are some kind of general human related questions that have a general answer for everyone. So, um, I think that even if, if we don't address you specifically, you'll still get something out of it for, for your question. So, um, it's not a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> You're, our, we're starting off strong, Jason. Our yeah. <laughs> it's not a lost cause. Don't worry. You're going to be okay. All right. Now with that, I do want to ask Jason to explain a little bit about who he is because uh, I think it's fascinating what you do, Jason. And just let us know how long you've done it and what it is you do and how people can learn more about it. Um, I am a QHHT practitioner, which stands for Quantum Healing Hypnosis uh, Technique. Um, so I've been doing that, I, I guess it's about six years now. So, um, it was developed by Dolores Cannon. I never in a million th years thought would think that I would be doing hypnosis and past life regression. It just kind of happened. Um, uh, so I do that. Um, and if you, you're not familiar with QHHT, it's kind of, I like to call it kind of a spiritual hypnosis. Um, uh, traditional hypnotherapy works more in the present. Um, QHHT works with the understanding that we are multi-lifetime, multi-dimensional beings and that we interact all the time with other lifetimes and they affect us physically and sometimes. So um, it's it's a different approach to like healing and understanding kind of like mental wellness or mental health wellness and things like that. So um, that's where I started. And um, I love it. I absolutely love it. There's, um, it, it's not just about helping others. It's about broadening my own knowledge and communicating with spirit teams, but also intergalactic beings and collectives and everything else. So it's, I, every time I, I do a session, it's just always so mind blowing because I, I tend to battle between the really analytical, really critical, um, thinking and then the spiritual. So um, at least with the QHHT, it's like I, I had no choice but to <laughs> accept what's coming through and the information I get. So that's what I do for um, the hypnosis. Awesome. So that QHHT was uh, founded, created by Dolores Cannon, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Right. 
And uh, so to be a QHHT practitioner, I think there's like a level one, a level two, a level three. I don't know. What mm -hmm. level are you? I'm a level two. Um, okay. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of level twos, I think, that we, we qualify for level three, <laughs> to be honest. But it um, you do have to get recertified every year. I, I think it's, from what I understand, I'm not a, a Reiki master or anything like that. But I, I know that there's a level with Reiki where you have to kind of do it every year. So um, I'm, I'm happy with where I am now. Um, but the level one is kind of you know, you're, you're still getting your wings level two. You've done at least 125 sessions and, um, 125 sessions to be able to qualify for level two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, that's level three. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to have 125 for, for level three. So there's oh, a lot okay. of us that you have that. <laughs> I see. Okay. So at any rate you have to, it's, it's monitored it's certified, you have to continue your education, uh, mm -hmm. continue getting um, recertified? Um, the level two, not so much. Level three, okay. you do. Um, level three, but... you do. So that's where you would have to be certified every year. And I wonder what the diff what is the, what is the big difference between level two and three? Level three, as far as I know, it's teaching you to do the hypnosis exactly to the T uh, like Dolores did it, which is, not a bad thing. Um, I mean, we're very true to the practice. Practitioners do adhere to what she did, um, but it, it includes like the sound and your tone and everything else. Um, and then there, it's more active in terms of just the forum, the QHHG forums, and oh, okay. you, you promote Q, Q, QHHG a little bit more. So you're kind of a not a storefront. I, I can't think of the right word, but <laughs> okay. <clears throat> A representative of, of of the practice. Great. So when you're when you're doing um, and just bear with me for my uneducated question. No. Uh, when you're taking a patient, a client into this hypnosis, what is your what is the goal? Why do people come to you? Why what can they get from this? It really varies greatly. A big, a huge, tremendous part of the experience is healing. Um, so it, it kind of works with the understanding that a large majority of what we experience in our physical bodies is a spiritual message or our spiritual messages and, and simply ways for our spiritual, our spirit team to communicate with us. And it's just a matter of kind of understanding the roadmap of the body and what things represent. And then also looking at things that are going on in your life or have gone on in your life. Um, the healing can happen. There are, um, I don't want to say there's no limitations of what can be healed, but there are um, reasons why, for example, someone's higher self might not heal a person, um, which can vary greatly from that's something that you chose on this life path in order to learn from, or it can also be a matter that you're, you know, there's a lot of people out there who kind of identify with being sick or identify with their illness. Um, and sometimes use that as manipulation control over others around them. Um, so it's there are different reasons why healings may not occur. Um, so the healing is one. Two, um, there's a lot of people who are just really curious um, about having questions about have I had lifetimes? What are they? I mean, some people I've met with and some, some of the most powerful sessions I've actually had are people that really have no idea what they're walking into. They're just curious and they're really open-minded and it's something like mind-blowingly incredible. Um, another case is, and more recently, it's people are really starting to wake up to, um, our, our consciousness is raising and our vibration is raising. So we're seeing a lot more, we're understanding a lot more information is being poured into us every day um and dna is being flipped on um which has been told to me like people's abilities i've been seeing people who never considered having abilities their entire life and then all of a sudden it's like they're having visions and thinking they're going crazy um so it's it's and it's very interesting to find out just how powerful they are in some cases and um so that's 
that's just a snippet of what people come for the sessions or why they come for the sessions. So when you hypnotize somebody and the, again, I'm trying to put this into words because I actually haven't had exactly QHHT. I've kind of mm -hmm. had a kind of a version of it. Um, you're communicating with someone's higher self. <clears throat> and what do you consider to be the higher self? Would you, how would you describe that? Um, it, it's, it, you know, it's interesting. Um, the higher self, I mean, generally is understood as that kind of your soul self. So it's the soul that has all the knowledge of all the culmination of life experiences. Um, all lifetimes are happening at once, but we don't have to go, go down that rabbit hole. Um, but it has full knowledge of everything that you've learned and everything you've experienced and everything that you've set out to do. And especially for example, this lifetime we are experiencing right now has full knowledge of this was my plan. This is the, the kind of the movie that I, or the script that I've written out. These are the players. Um, and that, you know, it can't tell us certain things. Um, but in the actual hypnosis, it typically is relaxation. And then someone sees a lifetime in the lifetimes. If they see them are always directly relevant to the questions that they're asking in this lifetime, which is always, it's always kind of like a, a mystery novel in a way because it's like, oh my God, this relates. It does, you know, they're picking potatoes, but it's still, it still relates somehow. Um, and then the last part is the higher self, but that's always interesting because there is, there is the higher self, but other times I've had, you know, spirit teams coming through, spirit guides coming through, protector spirits coming through. Um, I've had, um, galactic entities collectives come through um which the first couple times that happened i was just like oh my god this is so amazing because it was just like <laughs> i can't believe i'm talking to an et right now um and it's 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 also i've i've had a couple cases where it's it's i've gotten some very serious information um that i didn't really know what to do with the information and they just were kind of I would ask, and I say they because it's usually more than one energy. Um, what I do that with that information, and they would just say, you know, this is just to inform; it's not to cause fear. So, um, it's really there's there's the standard format, but going in, it's it can be anything and everything, really. Super. So that and that's fascinating. I I think it's always interesting to have an opportunity to talk to spirit guides and ETs and, you know, what, whoever shows up. Right. <laughs> um, so if you were to give us some advice, like, so you're kind of in the catbird seat in the sense that you've done a lot of these sessions and you've seen kind of what people struggle with. You've seen what the soul tends to struggle with is, have you seen some patterns? Like most humans tend to struggle with these couple of things and, and have you seen some ways that you could give people some advice on how to deal with one or two of those things? Yes. Um, one is absolutely, you know, without a doubt always comes up in a session. Um, and the funny thing is, is that part of the process preparing for a session is coming up with physical related questions, um, life path related questions, and then curiosity questions. Um, but there's always those questions that we come up with that when I ask them as in the session of their higher self, there are always one or two or possibly all of them where they say, she knows this. Why is she asking this question? I hate when they do that. What do you and, mean I know it? You know, <laughs> if I knew it, I would fix it. See, now I would have to have a fight. Now, now you're going to have a fight. You know, like, okay, you're going to tell a woman that she, that's, okay. Mm. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's, and it, it, it really comes down to, and the best way that I can put it is um, our questions have to come from somewhere. And a lot of times with that core, that foundation, that base, I mean, we wouldn't have a question about something if we didn't have some knowledge, you know, did I, was that my grandfather that was knocking okay. on my window? Do we have the knowledge, but do we have the answers? Are you telling me I got the answers all this time and I'm just sitting down here twiddling my thumbs? That's yeah. Funny. 
according to, I mean, it's much easier to sit here and say that, and then you walk outside and, you know, you get yeah. hit by a car or whatever else. I mean, it's, um, it's easier said than done, but in the spiritual perspective, we have all access to everything. And a lot of times those little sparks of information or sparks of, you know, inspiration, our ego is the one that comes in and is like, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. Oh, how are you ever going to do that? What past lives that, because your ego has no knowledge of past, other lifetimes. So it's like, what is this past life stuff? Why are you listening to this? <laughs> Which some of you might be doing right now. Um, <laughs> And it's, it's our ego has a really huge part to play in our daily experience. And the, the thing that I have learned about it, that's mm -hmm. also something really important that, you know, generally that I've learned and accidentally learned is our ego is actually a separate part of us. It's not part of who we are and are meant to be part of our thinking processes. They are self-aware. Um, and I, I'll kind of explain that in a, in a session Sometimes people's egos get in the way, meaning this isn't working. What am I doing wrong? Why am I seeing this? And you get into this just cyclone of basically knocking your house down in terms of being able to really open up. And sometimes as a practitioner, I say, okay, will um, Susan's ego step to the side? You can watch, but we really are we're doing this for... <laughs> spiritual purposes. Um, and in one case, I had the ego respond and said, thank you for acknowledging us. And it was the most, I, I took a second, like a double take. And I was like, I didn't know this was a thing that egos are aware. Um, they said, we always get the bad rap that our goal and our, they said, thank you so much. For <laughs> we get the bad rap. And the thing is that we're here. They say we get really good satisfaction out of making you fumble, making you question yourself, making you, you know, not do what you set out to do. They get a lot of joy and satisfaction out of it. But at the same time, the higher purpose is to learn or have us learn how to trust ourselves and trust our intuition and trust our gut and instincts. Um, that for me was really, and has been really powerful because I, you know, you get on that train with your ego. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're not going anywhere. Um, and that I recognize now when it's my ego stepping in saying, okay, I don't need this right now. I know what I need to do. Please, you know, take, take a break. Um, so that's another thing, but <laughs> I think we can all identify with. Um, the, I guess I would say, and I noticed that the questions that were coming in have to do with what do I need to do in this lifetime? How do I get on my soul path? And one of the most you know, broad, this is actually for everyone. The reason why we're here is to help each other. And that's come from spirit, that's come from higher selves, um, that that's all that we really need to do is help each other because this is the hardest school we all sign up to come here a lot of, you know most of us well full well know that it's difficult it's heavy it's dense it's thick we come in with amnesia we don't remember who we are we don't we forget we're connected to the universe um so it's like helping each other <laughs> is probably one of the most important aspects of the earth experience and why you know, one reason why all of us are here is, you know, it's not easy. Let's help help each other out and and lift lift this dense cloud together. So awesome! I love that. And I just want to say, hey to Kevin, hey to Sybil. Thanks, moderators, and thanks, Shaughnessy. Um, and I just want to say that it's it's interesting. I want to give you a counterpoint to this. Um, so ego, think of ego as your thinking mind. Uh, you know, people, we hear ego and we think about egotistic. Um, just think of it as the computer program that's running your mind. And the ego is really helpful. It's like, don't touch the stove, it's hot. Or did I turn the stove off? Or I should stop at this stop sign. Or, you know, I should be at work on time. Ego is, is like the operating system. And it's, it's a really important thing. However, 
because your operating system was installed by your parents who you choose to learn certain wonderful lessons from and is influenced by these past lives and things, um, your, your operating system could stand some updating so you can update it by like what Jason is basically saying is, Okay, yeah, I, I love my ego. I, I want to know, right? I want to I want to know how to survive. I really feel like how I describe ego is a survival instinct. You know, I need to be at work on time. I need to pay this bill. I mean, yeah, that's 3D or stuff. It's super important. And if we didn't have the ego to help us do those things, and we were just relying on our higher self and our our ascended energy. Uh, we would all be homeless and hoping for somebody to give us some food like a monk. We'd be trying to live like a monk. We're not monks. So I think the real challenge as humans, right, is, is yeah. what my spirit guides talk about is this is the time where humans can integrate. We can integrate the ego and the higher mind. And and I don't know how you do that. I'm telling you, I'm on like level 100. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. Because, because to me, it's like I switch back and forth, right? Like, so for me, I'm not integrated, but I do understand that sometimes I want to listen to my higher mind and sometimes I want to listen to my ego. Now, I want to say also, this is, this is really important. It's really hard to hear your higher mind. It, it, you're the, the voice that's in your head that's going to be the loudest voice is going to be your ego. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... It's hard to hear that. So what I tell people to do is I would, oh, and Kevin Loving Vibrations here too. It's a party. Um, <laughs> what I tell people to do is start listening to your higher mind when it doesn't matter. Like literally go to the frozen food section and say, would I like this? And if you feel like, and it's not something you'd normally buy and you get a yes, however that appears for you, take it home and, and see if you like it right? And then you're going to start being able to figure out what that sounds like for you. Is it a big yes? When when there's nothing on the line, your ego doesn't care. Your ego's like, I'm going to go over here and take a nap. You know, I don't care what you buy, you know? So, but your higher mind is like, oh, we want you to be a little healthier. We want you to stop eating cheese and chocolate and, and all those things. But anyway, um, so it's, it's a process guys. Just don't think that I, and I don't know about you, Kevin, but I, or, or not Kevin, but Jason, I don't, mm -hmm. I can't always hear my spirit guides because if it's a, something that I have a lot of emotion around or it's a mm -hmm. big decision, my ego is going to be right up in there, you know, like elbowing to the front and say, Susan, based on these years of your experience and the data that we can provide for you, this is what you should do, right? So it, it's that's why I think we turn to cards sometimes, right? We turn to an external thing that the spirit guides can communicate to us through or you get a reading with jason i don't know yeah <laughs> it's true and i and i in a different way connected to that is we 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 have all these tools around us because of what we forgot that we can do um i've heard technology described like that you know the connections with everyone around the world we forgot how to do that and we actually can do that. It's just, we, we are not there yet or we're heading that way. I I'm sure of, but um, it's the same thing with, you know, Oracle cards and everything else. It's that we, we, at least for some, we don't a hundred and hundred percent trust everything. And it's nice to have that little, you know, that little boost. Sure, it's training it's training yeah. training or a crutch. And I think what you're talking about is like, uh, the guides told me if if we didn't have cell phones, we would already be much further along with telepathy. But this this becomes, you know, the thing. Right. And Oracle cards become the thing. But sometimes we need those training wheels. Sometimes mm -hmm. we just need a little extra support until we can kind of get to that point where we yeah. can not need them. Yeah. And I, I about the ego, it's that what you were kind of describing is was also kind of voice during that session was, you know, we, we are here to protect, we are here to make sure that you're okay and don't touch the stove yeah. more than once. Um, so that that's important, but I, I, I feel like, like what you said, it's, it's this finding that balance and that medium. Yeah. And 
at the same token, they never ever expect us to be perfect. We wouldn't be here <laughs> if we were. No. Um, they'd be out of a job, Jason. They would yeah. be out of a job. Yeah. If I was perfect, they'd be like, all right, we're unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, and there'd be a lot of people out of jobs if we, you know. <laughs> That's true. You're thinking about all the aliens and all the people that you've talked to through your yeah. clients. You're like, oh my yeah. God, they'd all be out there. <laughs> I, yeah, people, I, I think it would be, you know, self healing, everything else. I think it would be a complete massive shift. Um, <laughs> but that's, so, that's another so, rabbit hole. <laughs> Cindy wants to know how do we drop the ego so we can explore our higher self? I wouldn't say you drop it. What I tell people is, like it's exactly what Jason said. Like, can you go over there? Can you step aside? Can you give us some room here? But I found with my clients that what I tell people is imagine. Once you say the word imagine, I swear your ego's like, peace out. She's not talking to us. <laughs> we don't know nothing about no imagination. We're facts, figures, we're Google. <laughs> we're nothing about we're Wikipedia. We don't so if you want to know how to get your higher self or to get your guides or get guidance, just say, if I were to imagine what's the best thing for me to do and simply write down really quickly, the very first thing that came to your mind, it's almost like slipping around that thinking ego. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I, just in terms of the QHHG hypnosis, Dolores Cannon's daughter, Julia, she's she used to be a, a nurse and she was very analytical and everything else. And it was really difficult for Dolores to get her to go under hypnosis. Um, and she finally was able to do something very similar to what you're doing. It's where you, you just imagine, visualize whatever your ego would look like sitting in a chair. You're sitting in a chair in the middle, your higher self and your spirit teams on the other side of the room. And you just say to your ego, this is very important to me. I want to be able to experience and access my higher self and spirit team. Can you just give me this two hours or 30 minutes or however long? And they'll do it. It's And that's exactly how they wanted to be communicated with. They're like, don't push our head underwater. We're going to come back thrashing. That's actually what they say. Um, it's like you don't have to be mean to us and say, I'm going to drop you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> or you're the enemy. You know, some people yeah. want to say, and the ego is not the enemy. It's not that at all. It's it's mm -hmm. more of a balancing thing. So, yeah. So <clears throat> if you can imagine, if you, some people can't see pictures. If you can see pictures, imagine your ego sitting over there relaxing. Um, also, if you can't see pictures, just know have a knowing. You just know that it's true. And then I want to talk about, because I think this is the biggest thing that happens is the ego is trying to keep you safe. So inherently you don't feel safe. So if you felt safe, I think the ego would easily more often give you that space you need. So how does one feel safe? How do, how do we connect with the idea? That we're truly safe it's the trust factor and that's something that is really i think for everybody is an ongoing challenge it's the faith factor it's willing to take the leap off the cliff knowing that there's a fluffy pillow on the bottom well bigger than a fluffy pillow but um it's and it takes and it is everything your ego hates like it's outside of the realm of rationality um, but there are those things like personal experience. I had a really hard time starting to do QHHT because I was in grad school and I never quit. And it was another degree for mental health. And, but it was just like banging on my door. And I felt like my spirit team was banging on the door saying, you just, you need to do this. You need to do it. Don't do the program anymore. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Wow. It took a lot. I fought a lot. <laughs> I even was like, what happens if I stop my program? What about financial aid? And I was like doing all this research and then it was my ego taking over again. And then it was just like, just do it. And I did it and it was the best decision I could have done. But um, it, was, it, was, it was a process. And it's the things that 
I think it's the fear factor in what we do and the fear of stretching our limits and the fear of going beyond our comfort zone. But then it's at the same time, like in my program, it's like I had already started researching Dolores and I knew mental health issues go much, much, much broader than what we experience in one lifetime. So it was like I already took the pill and I already knew that I couldn't do a, be a, a therapist um, and tell, diagnose someone with something when I full well knew that it was a bigger picture. In another lifetime, it could have been, it can be something spiritual, multidimensional. Um, so I, I really had no choice. I just, I fought the whole way down. Um, <laughs> oh, I totally know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so but it's a leap of faith. And that's, that's, it takes a lot. It does. But if you just put fear aside and what, that's another thing that, will, you know, in the spiritual terms, the only disease of the planet is fear. They call it the fear virus um, because it's contagious. It affects all of us or can be affects all of us. That's the only real disease on this planet. Um, and I think that ties right into our ego. It's like when we get scared, the ego comes in to protect us because that's what it's supposed to do. But if we didn't have the fear, <laughs> they could have more vacation time, I guess. <laughs> if we didn't have the fear, um, or or maybe there's a balance. I mean, I really feel like what they're showing me is, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, they're taking me back to like the caveman or homo, you know, whichever one you want to call uh, the beginning of man and, and fire, right? And how important fire was and how much more afraid of everything we were because I mean, let's think about it, right? It, that was really a time when it was very uh, fragile. Human life was very fragile. And they're telling me, even though you've advanced tremendously as humans, you've kept the fear. You've almost kept the fear of those times. And there's no reason for you to be that afraid. And I think it goes back to a little bit to what you were saying earlier about helping one another. Now, I kind of have been on this kick because my spirit guides have been saying that you got to fix it in here to fix it out there. I can't fix my family or my boss or my dog or my neighborhood or politics or anything. I can't. But once I start to raise my own vibration in whatever way that that is and in whatever amount that I can, Meaning we're not always going to be zippity doo dah. We're humans. That's just um, um that's not even going to work. But you know, raise your vibration up and down. Just try to to raise it up as much as you can. And then that doesn't that just shine love and light to everyone around you? And in that way, aren't we lifting up like high tide raises all mm -hmm. boats? Right. Right. Yeah. I, and I I think it's interesting you bring that up because I. I used to have these really prophetic dreams when I was a kid. Um, and I would wake up and be like, oh my God, this is insane. I, you know, where'd this come from? And one of it was I was in an auditorium and there's a speaker on the stage. And the one thing I remember is, do you have to love yourself to love another? Or do you have to love another to love yourself? And I, that stuck with me. I was, I had to have been eight years old. And that was always something, even when I was studying philosophy, that was like something I had in the background. And I've really come to the, you know, through what I'm doing or have been doing is it isn't either or it's, it's, it's the act of working on yourself is the act of working, you know, helping others because it is contagious. So it's, it's, there isn't a, tr it's not one or the other <laughs> because we are all one. So the work I'm doing on me, I'm doing on you and everyone else that's here. So it's, that's, I think that that, and I, it's, it's just saying it, I think the implications are a lot more because, um, you know, we feel guilty when, you know, especially when a lot of us who are here right now have chosen to come back, didn't necessarily want to come back, but we have powerful, you know, abilities and our healers and, and seers. Um, we want to be helping everybody so much that we forget ourselves. And it's, it's, that's another balance is that, you can't give everything away because 
if you're neglecting this, you're neglecting everyone also. So it's 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 always important. Just in the, in the, the experiences I've had, especially with QHHT, there are so many people who are here that are meant to heal, but they give everything away and they don't leave anything from themselves. Um, so that's it's important to remember that you're important too. <laughs> yeah. And if you're giving it all away, your tank is empty, your car runs out of gas on the side of the freeway, uh, and you're not helping anybody, right? So uh, we really, I think this is super important as we go into 24 for some reason. We've got to be better about filling our own tanks up. We've got to be better about it because honestly, I think there's a lot of need out there. There's going to be a lot of people seeking healers seeking light workers. All of us were light workers. Um, you just have no idea how you heal people. And, you know, it just happens in the grocery store line. It happens everywhere. So if you keep your tank nice and full, you know, you're just going to be exuding that beautiful energy. That's going to be, it's going to be helping so many people. And it, it's, and I think another thing is that we all kind of, a lot of us have the misconception that we have to be doing something spiritual to be yes. or getting into a spiritual profession or doing becoming a Reiki healer or whatever else. I, I've and I've seen this in terms of I've met with clients who are, you know, I won't one was a multi-million dollar uh, realtor in a very prominent area of Colorado. She was very spiritual, very into past lives, and she was very into the all. And she felt like that there was a disconnect between what she was doing in her career and who mm -hmm. she was as a person. So she really wanted to know, that was one of her questions, am I on my path because I don't feel like I am because I'm <laughs> selling really expensive properties, but I feel like I, I could be doing more. And her herself was like, you are exactly where you're supposed to be because just by being you, you're bringing that light to a part of, you know, in this case, Colorado, multi-million dollar homes, um, that people who need it. And so it's like, even though we think that we're not doing something spiritual, just by exuding that light and doing the work on ourselves, we, we heal others. So. I love that. I love that example because here you have a high end, a realtor or person, and they're, they're doing the work just like somebody serving soup in a soup line. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all humans, regardless of whether we have a lot of zeros in our bank account or one zero on our bank account, we're all humans. And there, and we need people to plug in to us at all these levels. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it comes from a place of trust and faith too, that you have, we're all important. We all have the ability to raise vibrations. No one's insignificant. And oftentimes, People who are light, people who are powerful light workers, they've met a life of conflict or people not understanding them or people thinking they're crazy or why are you happy all the time? What what do you want from me? Why are you giving this to me? And their light slowly goes out. And it's because it's not because they chose particularly that experience, but they chose to go into a life where they were reaching out into areas that were dark and problematic. Um, relationships that were dark and abusive or going to school settings that were abusive and atrocious. Um, when that, we forget where we come from, that's part of the youth experience. Our ego starts taking over and it's like, no one gets me. Why am I here? What am I doing? And I'm going to shut down because no one gets it. And spirit's always like, no, absolutely not. You have to keep doing what you're doing even if you don't see the way you're touching people's lives you are and they might see it and they have a choice to accept it or not it has nothing to do with you that's their choice and just to keep moving forward and shining your light that is so important i mean i think that should be repeated every day you don't you're not in charge of understanding how your light is shining <laughs> you know you may not you're more than likely not aware of your light um and that it's that's just operating on its own it's like on a separate operating system it's doing its own thing what you can do to affect that is to you know love yourself and take good care of yourself and then you know your light is even bigger i love that mm -hmm. it's really good lessons yeah and i'm watching your thoughts too it your takes thoughts. work 
negative self-talk. Um, that that I'm thinking of a few clients I, that kind of related to what I just said, and just they one of them um, very similar in, in type of circumstances. I explained she was 22 and had MS, and it was her doctors were just like, I don't understand this. You're too young. What's going on? Um, her higher self revealed she is light incarnate. She is a light being. She's never been here before. Um, the MS, it's because her body was listening to the way she talked to herself in her head. Like, why, you know, what's wrong with you? Why are you always in a good mood? Why, why, why are you so weird? And this started eating away and her body listened. And so the MS was, it's bought, her body started attacking herself because she was attacking herself in her head. And that's what she had to do in order to release the MS was change how she thought about herself. So it's things like that, that especially when it's manifested in ways that are so serious and so deteriorates the body, it's important to think about what am I doing? What am I thinking? Who am I engaging with? What must my spirit team trying to tell me? Um, so this felt, um, yeah. That's great. Thank you. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, because I think that's where we are. Like, it's a very tough concept to tell someone they brought on their own illness. Um, yeah. I don't want to tell someone that. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it for me. I don't want to think about it for other people. But um, I can say to people that you can change the trajectory uh, if you've already done this, right? This is when we find out about it. Um, if, it, if, if you're already having back issues, I mean, read Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, it, all your whole body, the, and this is kind of what you intimated earlier, the guides are always sending us messages. You guys know that I'm always saying this, but if you have knee problems, look that up. If you have a shoulder problem, look that up. But I think please pay attention to what Jason is saying about be nice to yourself. This is the only reason I can talk to my spirit guides. I've shared this with you guys many times. I went through this, you know, when you go through something hard, you start to ask questions. Why me? Why this? Right? When you start asking questions and you fervently want an answer, you start getting answers. If you're open enough to hear them, you get those answers. And that's when your life changes. That's when you realize, I do need to talk better to myself. I need to be my own best cheerleader. There isn't anybody lined up, probably. There's not a big line of cheerleaders cheerleading you. It, you we have to do it ourselves. And that's when you can change your actual DNA and your, your, the, the cells in your body. You can switch them on to a different type of vibration. That's so true. And, you know, when I first was getting it, it's funny because, you know, we, you grow up hearing like spiritual new age things and you think, eh, but then I feel like I'm kind of like being not smacked with them in the face, but it's like, yeah. there's something to this because it's so important. Like the negative self-talk, I mean, that it's not anything that's new, but having the understanding that, and this is what I've learned just through this practice is our bodies are conscious. Our cells are conscious. If you take one cell away from a bunch of other similar cells, it'll die. It needs to be around in a collective. They are aware of us. They think we're like some type of, you know, God in a way. Um, but it, they listen to us. So if we say 25 million times, I have an ugly nose, our nose isn't going to get any better. Yeah. <laughs> And it's important to give gratitude to it. It's like our bodies are a bar borrowed vehicle and we need to treat it well. We are not our bodies. Um, and speaking to it and saying, hey, finger, thanks for helping me out in this life. Or I wouldn't do it in the grocery or the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Come on. <laughs> Why not? But seriously, we do how many times a night, you know, just think of how many times you've actually and this is just for everybody, thank a part of your body for doing what it does every day. All we do is we say the negatives, like I wish I had less weight or I wish I was hot taller or I wish I was skinnier. Um, 
if I only my knee would act up or stop acting up, I could, could run a marathon. It's it's this negative. It, it's it, we saturate our bodies with negative negativity, and we wonder why we get sick. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it is true. Well, if nothing else, if your knee is acting up and you just suffer through it because <clears throat> you don't want to own the fact that it's got problems and then the problem gets worse. So if you listen to your knee and said, oh my gosh, my knee is really hurting me today. And you rubbed it and sent it love. And you said, what do I, what do I need to do here? What would, what would be the best thing? And, and the, the best thing I can really tell you and Sharon wants to know, how do you hear your guides? Pay attention, you guys, when you say, what do I need to do to fix you, Mr. Knee? And, it, and then what happens is you might hear something or you might know or you might feel lose weight. And then you think, well, of course, that's my brain. Of course, I need to lose weight. But it's really your spirit guides. And because your ego is kind of processing the information and it makes sense, I'm telling you guys, your ego, if it makes sense, your ego claims it as its own and says, you know, do this. And then we think, of course, that, you know, that's nothing special. If it doesn't make sense to your ego, you're going to forget about it because your ego is like, there's no, there's no file cabinet. I just, just doesn't get rid of it. So what I tell you guys is write it down. If you write it down, if you write down every single crazy thing, I saw a blue bird. I had a thought, a crazy thought. I hadn't thought I should go back to school. I had an idea that I should maybe take a painting class. I don't even paint. I had an idea of I should maybe call my brother. If I had an idea that, um, you know, I should um, take some more time off, take a vacation. I, you know, those that's guidance, you guys. That is guidance. If you'll write down everything, every time you see a repeating number, write it down. I challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge you to a spirit guide duel. Write it down for 30 days. <laughs> go back. Go back and look at those things. And I promise you, after 30 days, you're going to be like, holy crap. Because it's real, it's guidance, and it's your whole life is right there in those pages, and you can't deny it. And you're like, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah, so that's good guidance. And our spare teams, they, I mean, I've, I've communicated with some spare teams, and they get kind of frustrated. Like, you know, we kind of signed up for this, um, especially the one that's with us our whole life. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying they get bored, but it's like, I really wish she would just make this one decision yeah. to leave her job and look for something yeah. new so I can help her because we yeah, can't yeah. interfere. We can't change her life path. If she just says this one thing without even knowing what's going to happen and not letting her ego own it, like you just said, and trusting and taking that leap of faith, we can come in and help. It's we, we, <laughs> It's, it's those little things that we think we have to have the whole plan at play. What about tax? You know, I don't know why taxes is shot out of my mouth, but <laughs> yes. I have to worry about income and health care and where am I going to live and how am I going to support this and how am I going to do that? And, and then sometimes it's just your spare team is just giving you the hint of all you need to do is just leave your job and we can provide the rest because you'll be on your path and you'll be happy and pursuing the path that you created for yourself. It's just yeah. the trust. It's just the trust. And, and that's hard, right? Because your ego's like, I don't know. I, there's not another job out there. I'll never get another, you know, there's a million ways that your ego can uh, make sense of it, that this mm -hmm. is not the best idea. Um, but I'll tell you guys, every time I've made a mistake, it's because I've thought about doing, I've over, I've, I said, okay, my next step is this. And I'm going to Google, I'm going to research. I'm going to come up with the best plan. And it just doesn't work. But when I listen to that aha moment or those five people that have shown up in your life at various times and said, you're a really good teacher. And you'll be like, who are you talking to? I'm not a teacher. You know what I mean? Like there, I promise you, if you guys all look at your lives, there's going to be like one thing that more than one person has told you that has stuck with you, but you thought that's the weirdest thing. People keep saying I should do this. That's guidance. That's your spirit guides telling you. 
sending you messages. I, I had a, a spare team one time say, cause you know, there's so many people that say, I don't, I don't communicate with my guys. How do I hear my guys? And um, it was actually kind of a comical higher self spirit team slash. Um, and they said, this is the way, this is kind of the litmus test. This is how you tell if you've communicated with, with your, your spirit guides. And I said, okay. And they said, you can share this. And I said, okay. And um, they said, and, I'm sure almost all of us can say that there was that one time in our life that we knew we shouldn't have done something. We did it anyway. And we turn around and it goes bad or it doesn't go well. Yeah. And we think I should have listened to myself. Yeah. That's your team. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done that. How many times have we said that? I knew it. You know, we even turn right and we think, I don't think this is the right. Oh, I knew I should have. When you say that, you guys, I knew it. I knew that's your spirit guides. You're saying I knew I should have listened to my spirit guides. So yeah. you know, pay attention. It's it's right there. It's kind of yeah. like he said earlier. It's it's they're guiding us. They're all around us all the time. And that um, way we just kind of cringe. It's like your spirit guides are going, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we told I you. <laughs> It's gotten to the point now where they've got me so gun shy that when <laughs> I start to get a message, I'm like, oh, oh, shit. You know, <laughs> like I gotta, you know, because they get heavy handed if you don't if you don't really listen. It just seems like the energy builds up and then you, you know, you fall down and you get sick or you're supposed to take a vacation. You don't take a vacation. So what happens is you take a vacation with a foot in a cast. Uh, you know, you can do this the easy way or the hard way, how you want to do it. That's um, so true. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. It's like the easy way or the hard. So now when I start, but I know, but I got a hack, I have a hack for you guys. When I, when I'm with a client or something and I see the energy, like really big, like, I'm like, Oh shoot, you have not been listening. And there's a tsunami of lesson coming your way rather than having to deal with the tsunami. So let's say, let's say, that they're saying you got to quit your job. Your job is terrible. It's it's hurting your health. It's hurting your relationships. And blah blah blah. And so you're like, well, I know I need to quit my job, but I don't have the trust. I don't have the courage. Whatever it is. So you can actually do something small, and it kind of satisfies that energy. So yeah, yeah, you do need to quit your job. That that's gonna be it. That that's probably gonna be the answer. But to buy yourself some time, you can show your, your, you can show the universe, your spirit guides that you're in good faith, right? Okay. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe take this class. I'm going to learn this new thing that I think maybe, or maybe I've been getting this impression or this idea, this interest keeps popping up. You know, you see ads for it. People talk about it. I'm going to take this class. That's, that's your story taking a step towards what they want you to do. Therefore, they're not going to put the smack down. The whole big lesson doesn't have to manifest because you're taking a step. Just take a step towards them. And that changes the energy. And what, what somebody said to me once, and I think this is so true, certainly has been true for me. If I take a step towards the universe, the universe takes three steps toward me. Mm. All I have to do is take one step. And mm -hmm. they open three doors or they do three things times three to help me. It's, it's true. And it's, you know, I think it is tied to that. There is the law of non-interference where they cannot interfere in our lives or change our past in any way. They can give us nudges and, you know, little pushes to nudge us on our way. But, you know, if we don't make one pivotal decision that allows them to do the nudges, then we're stuck and they can't do anything. So that that totally is yeah. so right on. And sometimes like even that step, we might be thinking, why why would I be wanting to take a painting class? Our ego is like, you know, that's a waste of time when you're going to have to take off time work, when you're going to have time to do it. But it may not even be about the painting class. It that's might right. be about someone in the painting class exactly. is going to provide you with an opportunity to find a new job that you love. So exactly. it's, it's take, again, the leap of faith. But that one's a little bit, feels a little bit safer because it's, you know, I'm at least just going to go to the class and check it out to yeah. satisfy my curiosity and see what happens. So. Yeah. 
or that new love interest might be at that class or the new business opportunity or the new housing opportunity. Uh, guys, if you're in your living room and you're like, I can't get any help, <laughs> you know, maybe you need to get outside of your living room a little bit. Uh, so to give them a chance to help you. Uh, sometimes they've said to me, just do something, Susan, anything. Just I, yeah. Anything. <laughs> For the love of God. But, you know, you know, it's if, funny. if it's wrong, just it's do something. Funny. So the energy gets changed up, right? Because yeah. if you're doing the same thing every day, you kind of create this weird energetic box and you're living in this weird energetic box. Very hard for them to get a new message inside your energetic box. Right. When yeah. You step outside the energetic box. Then it's easier for them to arrange for someone to be at that grocery store, at that class or at the community center or wherever that you might be that be different. Mm hmm. And yeah, that's funny. I just thought it because, you know, we were talking about all the spiritual messages in the body and everything else. And sometimes it's exactly what you said. You just need to get out of the house. I've had, I had this lady who she was really into spirituality, you know, meditated, blah, blah, blah. I used crystals. She had sore shoulders and she wanted to know if it was a past lifetime. I mean, it was so complex and what she wanted to find out. And her higher self was just like, she just needs to stretch more. Oh my God. Oh my and it, God. It, it totally let her down. I think in the, in the answer was the guidance for her that she doesn't need to make things always so complicated, but oh my that, God. that was the answer. It was like, we don't have to heal anything. She just needs to stretch in the morning and she'll be fine. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> See, and that makes us mad because we're looking for some, we're looking for something like, okay, you need to go to Mount Shasta. And yeah. then you need to get on all fours on the full moon and you need to howl while you kick your right leg up. Okay. Like that, if you told somebody that, <laughs> and then you told them to go stretch, they would totally do everything you told them to do because they're, we're so invested in this idea of this spiritual ritual. You know what I mean? It's like, but spirit guides are like, ah, oh, she just needs to stretch. She's fine. I, I think, can't. and I think it's, the moment when your ego starts feeling like it's the spiritual ego and taking control. And I think that I, you know, I've met with people who they have every book on everything everywhere. They've signed up for all these online classes. They haven't finished. They've started all these projects that they've never done. I had one lady, she had like thousands of different herb supplements that she had never opened in her cupboards. Wow. And it, it's, it's, I think it, when our ego starts like, Oh, maybe there is something on the spiritual thing that we overthink everything and we over rationalize. Oh so in a way, it's almost like when spirit slaps us over the head and it's like, you just need a stretch. It's not going to be these 10 herbs <laughs> that cost $5,000. Right? <laughs> yeah. You just need to do some stretching. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. But, but it's, it's so true, right? We're yeah. overcomplicating, basically. We're overcomplicating yeah. these things. Yeah. Because we it can't is. believe it would be that simple. But it really is that simple, you guys. I turned my whole life around. The only reason I'm on this YouTube thing right now is because I learned to talk nice to myself. Once I started talking nice to myself and being my own cheerleader, then I could freaking hear the spirit guides. And, and, you know, of course, then I had to argue with them. But anyway, you know, look, it's I'm just trust but verify. I'm just saying yeah. trust but verify. But I mean, really. <laughs> And you're going to get me through this whole thing and then tell me to stretch? I mean, look, make up some stuff. Just make up something. Make me feel better about that. You know, and the thing is, is that even, you know, even though that's aggravating, there's sometimes just the, res the response has meaning. Like, so cool. why are you so upset about this? And it's because you've you've made this more complicated. Than, I mean, sessions always go to how they need to go. And sometimes it's not that doesn't end up what a person expects. And just that in itself is their higher self and spirit team being like, you need to think about this because this is why it's working. Um, you know, why your life isn't working. It's because you expect too much and you're not open to different ways of thinking or whatever else. So anyway, um, I also wanted to say what you're saying about, um, Spirit is all about bargaining, and I don't know what it is, but you were kind of like saying, you know, make make a deal where you want me to take this art class. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll do some research. 
it's getting the little bits to your spirit team and just yep. being like, okay, yep. I'll do this. If you could just give me some signs or nudges or things to push me along the way, that would be great. They're all about that. Even with healing, it's it's QHHC sessions. Sometimes it's like, you just told this lady she needs to start running and exercising again. She has this ankle that hurts her every morning and you heal it. And they'll sometimes they're like, no. And then it'd be like, but how is she going to run and how is she going to get more physical and active again if her, her ankle's healing? And they'll say, hmm. And then it would be, I know you're all powerful. You can heal anything. Anything's possible. There's no limitations. This would really help her. And then they'll be like, okay. And they'll do it. So the spirit world, it, it, I think it works the same way. It's like, if I do this, I'll give, you know, I'll give a little bit. <laughs> That's hilarious. It, yeah, yeah, they are going to maintain the communication. I like that, Kevin. Um, mm. and, and that's kind of what Jason was saying. Like, it, it's true. And, and this is something that we don't do enough of either. It's a two-way communication, you guys. I think that sometimes we're just waiting for signs from spirit. Mm. Send a message to them. Hey, I would like to see hearts. Can you show me hearts? Can I see some feathers? You know, like, this is really hard for me. I really want um, some messages from you guys that you got my back, right? Like if I'm really supposed to quit this job, if I'm really supposed to go and exercise, can I get some messages? It would really mean a lot to me, right? And I think they're happy to work with you. Like they love that. They love that communication back and forth with you. Yeah. And I, I, I feel pushed to say they have sense. Most of them, a lot of them yeah. have senses of humor. So oh, yeah. they're, I've been kind of attacked in some different ways about saying that, and I don't know why. And I know they, they joke. There's even like ETs that yeah. are hilarious, and I so laugh it's, all the time. We think we think it has to be some you know solemn Buddha on the mountaintop. No, 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 no. jokes allowed. But it's it, you know you can joke around with your guides, jo and I know mine think I'm no, hilarious. They, they they drive me crazy. So it's and they laugh at how in my head i get all the time yeah. so oh my god yes they're always telling yes. me to lighten up i'm like yes. i am like yes. um, <laughs> you know and i tell you what too your guides know you right like they they know you better than you know you and if you're the kind of person who likes to laugh uh they're gonna use laughter that's they're going to communicate with you the way the best way to communicate with you is if you're a very serious person and you're just you just don't really have that kind of sense of humor, they're not going to make a lot of jokes. They're they're not because you're just not going to get it and it's not going to work. They you know, they tell me it's so it's 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 not easy for them to communicate with us. So they don't miss an opportunity like they're not going to communicate with you in a way that doesn't work for you because then they've wasted that energy. They're not going to waste that energy. And I don't know why I got to tell this story because when you're talking about funny, cause they showed yeah. it to me and I, and I thought it was hilarious. And I often say good one to them. You know what I mean? Like you got me. Yeah. So this, this is a hilarious story. So I've got this um, for anybody that like your house, you've got like a pipe, that, a sewer pipe that goes out of your house and you've got this thing that's called a clean out. It's got like a little, a little a cap on it. And you, if your plumber ever needs to, they take the cap off and they clean your sewer. Okay, fine. So my lawnmower person ran over that and now there's an opening. So the sewer line is open, which is not a big deal at all. It's, you know, it, it's out in the alley. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to the restroom in the middle of the night and I'm sitting, no, the lights aren't on and I'm sitting on the toilet. And all of a sudden I saw this picture in my head of a snake in the toilet. <laughs> I literally like levitated off of the table and I was peeing and I was like, I can't stop peeing I, I <laughs> off of the toilet. And I looked in and I'm like, there's no snake in there. And I'm like, nice, nice. One. Because the darn, because it's been bugging me that the opening is, and I'm thinking, what a snake, you know, don't you see those pictures? I'm in South Texas, y'all. Yeah. I'm in South Florida. <laughs> But I'm telling you, there's no telling what could crawl in there. And it would be right in my toilet. 
<laughs> and I literally levitated. I was like, oh, y'all think that's funny. <laughs> probably telling me, Susan, you know, like a month from now, I'll be doing a video talking about the snake in my toilet. They're probably giving me a message. Honey, if you don't go get that fixed, there is going to be a snake in your toilet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I can't. I have to share. And I, I think it's. I've shared this once in YouTube world, but I, this is how I really learned that they have a sense of humor because I, I had a, I had a client. He was like a recovering math teacher. That's not to say anything bad about math teachers, but he was like the analytically minded, like I'm trying to open my mind. He was trying to figure out time and how time can be not linear. I mean, it was like, it, it oh, was, wow. Okay. He was like analytical, but he was moving into the spiritual realm and just, you know, he was open minded, but it was challenging. Um, he told me when we were speaking before the hypnosis, among many, many other things he had experienced, he's like, every time I'm home alone, I hear this really faint music and I can't figure out where it's coming from. And I said, is can you tell what maybe if does it have words is there a time period and he said no it's just barely audible and i search for it and search for it and it's only when i'm alone and i can't find it and i think i'm you know i i just want to know <laughs> i'm not crazy um and he's he had a wife and he would tell her and she was like mm -hmm, yeah and so you know, I had he had the most incredible session. It was the most incredible lifetime. It was like one of the first sessions I did. Um, his higher self came through, and towards the end, I said, "So he has this question about the music. He hears it. Does he? What is that all about?" And that they said, "We just do that to f with him." But, and I was like, <laughs> which he was like a really conservative guy, so like oh any type God. of. Bad language wasn't like in his vocabulary, oh my and God. that came out, and I just was like, I wasn't aware. <laughs> and they said he just needs to lighten up and stop taking stuff so seriously. So we just play that music to help oh him to kind of like. Meanwhile, the guys over here calling one eight hundred mental health professionals. I mean, don't y'all think that that was a little heavy? <laughs> you know, you know why they also do that is to prove to you that you have clear audience. It's also to prove that you can hear it. Sometimes it's just simply to prove to you that you have Clara psychic hearing. You know what I mean? Yeah. God, we just met, oh my God. Yeah. See, it, better it was, you than me. I'm telling you, my <laughs> sessions with the would not be good. <laughs> uh, it would not, I could be like, and you think that's perfect. I would just be like ripping that <laughs> spirit like, I'd be ripping them up. They, they, it would not be pretty. It would not be pretty. That's why I don't do this work. Yeah. I, I, I mean, when he came out of it, I said, well, I figured out why you hear the music. And he's like, oh, really? And I, I said, this is what they said. And I told him, he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was open, you know, he was like, I'll you know, maybe I do. Because um, I get in my head a lot when I'm alone and, and that would make sense to play a joke. Oh, my like God. That, they're so. all, yeah. They're trying to lighten him up. They're trying to. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, I don't think I need lightening up, honestly. I just don't. I just don't. Anyway, that's my that's my opinion. Wow, that is fascinating. Um, yeah. Let's just see. You know, um, Allison had the Stone Spirits here. There's a lot, and I saw uh, Topher. There's a lot of great people in the chat. Thank you, moderators. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining mm -hmm. us tonight. I really appreciate you guys. Um, what are some interesting things? I mean, what are some? Uh, what are what are the most surprising? situations that you've experienced i'll say that the healings have been something that um have i mean there's the healings are frequent i mean like i said in the beginning there's some re times when they won't do it but some of the healings have been visually incredible um just i saw a lady who she had this horrible um, thyroid issue, the higher, her higher self agreed to heal it. And I could actually, well, as she was laying on the table, see light because all the healing they do is with light. I could see the light. I mean, it wasn't like flashlight or beam of light. It was just a soft light emanating from her chest. And it was just, it was incredible. And 
I've had other people where their their bones are readjusted and um it kind of it's so weird because it's like I can't I still get in my head I'm so I can't believe this is happening right now it's kind of creepy and but I know that it's for the good and everything else but it just it blows my mind because it's beyond all comprehension um so that's kind of the healings are important I would say that um I just, I think the validation of ET races and um, has been the most profound for me, um, especially when I grew up terrified of UFOs and aliens. So um, I think that they're stepping forward and coming through sessions, not only for clients, but you know, it's also for me and communicating with me and talking with me. And they, the ones that I've been in communication with emanate that same loving, energy because they know it's so hard here and they know what it's like to be here and that this is like even though it's like winning the lottery to be here there's so many souls waiting for this earth experience because we learn the most it's the most difficult the most challenging we feel disconnected from everything and everyone so they they do have this very loving like we want to do everything to help you we want you to remember who you are um I will say the most profound thing was I had blue avians come through one time and blue avians, avians, which is an alien, you guys, blue, blue avians. avians. Okay. Um, which they're, they're an ET race. They're in another dimension. I think they're ninth, 10th or something. Um, they do look like birds, bird yeah. people. Um, it was incredible coming through the session because they were coming through the client um but she was like saying this is so weird to talk and i i said why and she was like moving her mouth all this weird way and they said she doesn't have a beak it was just really, really was weird <laughs> and but the weird thing was is when i was talking with them they were like joking with me and it felt like family in a way like how my my own family jokes with me it's kind of like this back and forth and I'd ask questions. They're like, "Oh, you know that? Why do we have to tell you that?" And it's and I'd be like, "Well, I kind of have to get it from you so that she can hear it <laughs> recording." Um, but it was so interesting in that that moment and that time to be in that energy and have it be like some other dimensional being that I knew may, might exist but didn't. And it just it felt it wasn't scary. It wasn't. And ultimately, I have learned that ETs aren't supposed to be scary, that they are, it's not supposed to be based in fear, that that's something that we've kind of, our society's kind of created in order for us not to remember who we are. Um, so I've learned there's so much. I wish it's just the interconnectedness, the history of the planet. Um, I could go on and on with with things that are just so powerful. Um, and it's just, it's so humbling to do, um, especially when it's important information and in a weird sort of way, they trust you with the information um, that sometimes is pretty important and relevant to what we're experiencing now on the earth. Um, so it's it's always interesting. Wow. Do you feel like, we are, you know, we are waking up, right? Um, we we have this amnesia so that I gather we can really learn the lessons, right? I mean, if, if you get all the answers to the test, then what's the point of taking the test, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we want uh, to expand our soul while we're here. Um, we want to grow our soul. But so are we, do you feel like we're going to be getting more help from aliens do you feel like that's going to be something that's going to be more prominent as we go into the next say five years oh yeah I, I, <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah yeah i i can i <laughs> yes and that's not and that's not to instill fear that's the worst no no um it it's help that will be received and out of love so just i want i have to preface that but absolutely yes um it's 
even though time doesn't really exist on the other side, it's like we're way past where this should have already happened 10 years ago. So um, they're very active. And I think it's it's telling in, for example, to go back to the sessions that I do, past lives aren't so important anymore. Um, they're valuable and they're meaningful and they can help us understand what we're experiencing in the physical. But it's that's kind of the 3D 1.0 and we're moving into the 5D 6.0 or 12.0 DNA and everything else. So um, it's a reflection of not only that they want to help us to remember who we are because it's kind of the game that is uh, not obsolete, but they want us to step back into or step into the galactic community. Um, so they're, for example, in sessions, people might not necessarily go to lifetimes. Um, they might go to other dimensions, ETs, other existences. Um, I had a client who was a planet in another galaxy. So wait, it's your really client was a planet? Your client was a planet? I was just a frog. Really? <laughs> wow. Damn. I need to upgrade. I need a better package. I mean, you never know. I mean, all of us, it's been told to me over and over and over wow, and over again. All of us who are here. A whole planet. Wow. That's and it's so tricky trying to figure, because it's like, in doing a session, you have to play detective. You can't answer, ask like really like factual questions because then, then then your ego's ears perk up. Um, so it's really challenging to, are you moving? What do you see? What do you feel? Do you have a physical body? And especially when it's a planet, it's like a lot of those answers are, nope, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but then it finally came through because she started describing the landscape, that it was like this pink purple sand that, um, and there was water, but there was also water, but then there was heavier water that was an ocean and everything else and i kept trying to figure out where she was and she was like i think i'm the planet because then our conscious mind kind of comes in and she's like i think i'm actually this planet i don't i can't explain it but i feel like i'm looking at myself and um it was incredible that's amazing and the thing that's incredible too about it is that it we're never shown anything that we can't handle we're not given information that we can't handle i it goes with spirit teams and everything else and but this is all happening to so many people now. It's like they know that we can process it and that we are our awareness and our consciousness and our vibration are raising. So we're ready for this. And that's what we're being prepared for. Um, so lifetimes are all fine and, fine and well. Um, but there's a lot of people here now who have never been to the earth before. Um, so it's, 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 immensely interesting especially when you like i come across people who this is their first time here they've never been here and it's 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 a challenge i'm glad they they got you on the line because i think that is extremely challenging um so i i have i had a question but i also have this question what was the other question um Okay, I'm just going to ask the one on the. I did have a follow up question, but I think this is true. Wiki is saying if the guides have a sense of humor, why doesn't your higher self? I feel like when I talk to my higher self, it's all business. It's no emotion. It's it's a droll if you know that word, if you understand what I'm saying, and it's it's all business and and the smackdown like um. I can, and, and if anybody wants to do this, this is not, this is something you can look into. You can try, you can work on putting yourself in a trance. Like I put myself in my own trance and then I ask my spirit guide, my, my higher self, I, not my spirit guide to my higher self. And then, um, I record it. So I vo voice record it and I just speak out loud what I'm getting. But is that your experience that the higher self tends to have less emotion or less humor or is that just me and wiki <laughs> i think it it speaks to and i've noticed this there there are i i have seen some or communicated with some higher selves that do have senses of humor um i have communicated with some that it's very no nonsense like um yeah 
there's it's it's almost robotic in a way and the best way i think i could explain it and this is not is our ideas of higher and lower or better or worse is that doesn't apply in the spirit world it seems like that if you have a higher higher self meaning it's more out there from the earth experience and okay. more distant okay. and more of a I don't know the wise elder type yeah. that it's yeah. like they don't really care if you win the lottery tomorrow yeah. and they could oh, yeah. care less if you get a job tomorrow this is what you need to do to advance yourself as a spiritual yes. being um I had those clients and they they're usually those who are ancient souls with abilities and knowledge that needs to be shared it's not that's that's kind of my what i've experienced that those of us who are higher higher vibration also their higher higher self are typically a little bit more higher no not sense right. and harder on you right <laughs> they yeah. they don't frost the cake to say no. it, put it no. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was the sternest talking to I've ever. I mean, it was basically like you're asking this question. Here's the answer, and I was like, "Dang!" You know what I mean? Like, it was yeah. really true. It was 100 percent true, and it was 100 percent succinct. It was yeah. like the you know, there's no wasted words. There's no wasted anything. It's just like boom, this is it. Yeah. Um, and sometimes and I, I've gotten that with clients too, right? Like, like I, when I first started doing readings, because I count myself as a Southern person and I, the, the things that I was telling my clients were like, I was like, y'all going to have to be nice. I mean, this is not how we talk to people because they were just like, you know, like, I'm like, you're telling my client she's fat. You know, that's why she's got down booties. I think maybe we need to do this a little different. I, I remember like after the first week of doing readings going, oh no, we're going to have to do this different. See, I, just don't, I just don't work like that, you know? So It's you know, true. Yeah, and work with you in different ways, you know? Yeah. And, and they've, they've, I've learned that they, they'll, they speak to you how you need to be spoken to. And there's been one or two times that, that they have been like, the higher higher selves and they they kind of forget things like volume and things like that so there was one time i almost flew off my chair because yeah. i asked you know can i speak with the higher self and it was like full blast wow scared the crap out of me because it was this really soft spoken woman <laughs> and all of a sudden it was like yes we're here and i almost flew off the chair and i, I said oh, like my God, you're so don't you have out. a cross in your back pocket you know get your <laughs> cross out and be like you know i don't know what and, the hell just happened i know there are there have been times that i sit in there and i it's an amazing session but i think to myself what if someone walked in right now especially i i had one client she actually was i can't really describe it but she was having a conversation with her higher self on her own while she was wow. in hypnosis so it was like i wasn't even asking questions she was it was like a full-on dialogue going on between her and her higher self on the table and that was one of those times i was like if someone walked in right now <laughs> It would be the cross, I think. Yeah, that and that in the white jackets, those those nice comfy yeah. white jackets that oh keep God. you moving your arms around. Mm -hmm. Holy moly! Yeah, you can ask the spirit guides to be, um, you know, they, again, they're not going to waste the communication, so they're gonna they're gonna deliver the the message the best way that you can receive it. They, they, it, it, this energy is so precious. They don't just go over there chattering away. Well, maybe mine do, but most people's don't. Uh, most people's don't. Sometimes yeah, that's they... a really good thing. Uh, singing. It, you, the, you guys are getting messages through songs. I promise you. At least twice a week, I wake up singing a song. It's always in the morning. Usually I'm making yes. coffee and I'm singing some song that I have never even heard on the radio in forever. And I have to Google the lyrics because I know it's a message for me. Um, and then I have to kind of figure out what it means because sometimes 
you know, timing is really not the same, right? So sometimes they give you a message and the thing hasn't happened and isn't even going to happen maybe for a week or a day, or that's why I say, write it down. Because if you don't write it down, all that work they did to give you that message didn't help you. It, it didn't, it was, it was wasted and they don't want that. So do you find that the timing can sometimes be like when you're doing a session, do they, are they really good about timing and say, she needs to do this now. She needs to do this. No. <laughs> okay. Well, in terms of like what they need to do, like right now, yes. Like what needs to happen in this moment. But if I say, you know, how long will this be? They always kind of, or they back away away from those questions because oh, the love of god you know just you know, man so, up and, and get a time <laughs> you know what i mean seriously you're not business you know even with the um et question you asked you know how soon is it going to be a couple of years ago i had a pretty intense session with a uh, galactic uh council um which there's galactic councils and then the galactic federation and they they were telling me some really serious stuff, um, including like, well, this wasn't serious, but about disclosure. And I asked out of curiosity, how, how long ago or how long will this be in the future? At the time they said 250 years. And then maybe last year I had another client that was coming through with information about, you know, disclosure and earth changes and the earth shift. And I said, well, when can we expect, you know, UFO or, you know, kind of more galactic presence? And they said, oh, two to, or two to four years. So it, I was just like, wow, that's kind of a why. <laughs> I guess we are behind. <laughs> I guess we are behind. Well, you know, the other thing is 250 years for them, it could be yeah. uh, two years for us. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the timing could be that off in that sense. Or uh, it could be that there was some catapulted time situation that happened. That yeah. fascinating. I keep thinking of questions I wanted to ask you. Go ahead. Kevin, um, I noticed in a question on by mentioned why why do the sessions, QHC sessions have to be done in person? Um it's just important. Um one, because Dolores and her team made it very explicit that they have to be done in per person. I think just generally speaking, the energy that you share with someone in person is much different than any type of online communication um, can offer. But the thing that's unique about QHHT is there are types of regression where it's lighter forms of trance. So you almost are an observer of a lifetime, like a movie playing on a film. QHHT takes you to the theta level, which when you experience a lifetime, you're experiencing it in the, in the, now as though it's happening you know it's nothing it's not like a memory it's like you are experiencing it first oh, you're person. experiencing it physically almost like physically. physically so stuff happens in life you know lifetimes yeah. Yeah. that when i first started doing it it was pretty like i had a lady that right off she, her fate her entire face turned bright red and i didn't know what was going on and her eyes started twitching uncontrollably and she but she wow. was in hypnosis and i was a new practitioner i thought okay what what do i do is this natural so i just kept going with it it ended up that she had this lifetime she needed to release that she was a a, a prisoner and i think it was the korean war it really wasn't clear but she was captured and she had been put under water torture where the dripping was hitting her head and that was actually why her eye had started and oh. um switching the beginning and then she had another life where she was burned at the stake as a witch and that was the heat so it was so that's relevant to it's really important to be in person with someone because say you're bound and experiencing water water torture and then your power goes out the internet drops you're kind of stuck um so that's that's the essential reason why it has to be in person and in, in person just safety yeah so i've i've been stuck before i've been left before um and you do come out of it you will mm. come out of 
it, but it's not the best situation. Let's just put it that way. You're not going to die, I don't think. Uh, maybe, yeah. I guess you could, theoretically. If it's a physical <laughs> sensation in your body, your body could could do something. And if there's no one there to call 911, then that's a problem. Um, yeah. So, um, and when he's saying Dolores, we're talking about Dolores Cannon. If you guys are not familiar with Dolores Cannon, uh, look her up. She's all over YouTube. She's got, I don't know, a million books that she's written. And she created this QHHT, quantum healing hypnosis therapy. Mm -hmm. Technique. Mm -hmm. Technique. Okay. Yeah. I get the H and H mixed up. Healing and hypnosis or hypnosis and healing. Um, yeah. So it's it's an interesting thing. You guys can find if you're in Colorado, hook this man up, look him up, um, because he's in Colorado. Uh, so you know, or you're nearby, or check out his website to see where he's at and what he offers. Uh, because this, as you can tell, this is super helpful. But mm -hmm. if you're not in Colorado, you can go to you can just Google QHHT practitioners, and you can find practitioners in your area usually. Uh, because this is all, you know, sanctioned by Dolores Cannon and these people are certified by Dolores Cannon. So you can find a certified practitioner wherever you are. Yeah, yeah, Joni's in Colorado. There you go. Awesome. So you can see um, how helpful this would be for you. Um, and another thing that's kind of cool is I, I'm not, they, they hold several retreats throughout the year. So if you have kind of an inkling or curiosity about it, it's for practitioners and non-practitioners. So um, the QHHC official website, I mean, some of them are pretty, um, <laughs> yes. one that I wish I could go on, but it's just way out of my budget. Um, but there's there's like one in Sedona that's coming up in May. And um, it's it's a good way to kind of, get around a group of like-minded people and um, learn more about QHHC. Is it only for practitioners? Is it only for practitioners? It's for practitioners, but also guests. So anyone can go. Oh, so okay. It's, so as a guest, you could go there and kind of get a couple of yeah. different... Um, you could probably even get a like a free reading. Um, wow. Part of it is where... And it's not one... It's not the type of like... I've been to those conventions that are like pressure it's it's not yeah. that whatsoever no, so it sounds like a retreat more yeah it's like a retreat more that. yeah okay. yeah <laughs> okay well that's good to know i want to yeah. answer two questions really quick could someone else's higher self send you a message like a song and i mean i guess theoretically they could but i don't see them wanting to do that particularly i don't know about what jason thinks but i think that the closest thing is is that their loved ones could send you a message like that. Um, I mean, what do you think about that? <laughs> I'm not, I, so this is like three, four, 5.0. Um, I I've learned over the past year with one particular client that we have more than one higher self. Um, okay but in different Dimensions. universes. Dimensions, um, okay. Uh -huh. So in essence, there were some things that happened with this client that he was getting a lot of information that he didn't understand from his other higher self okay. um, that needed to be, that sexually needed to be fixed. And I, I can't even begin to explain how that happens. Um, it didn't make sense to me. So... Long story short, I'm sure that would be possible. Nothing's impossible. I'm not sure why they would do that, but um, this is from another person's. This, not you're saying your client had multiple well, higher selves. Else is, so someone yeah. else. What I'm getting from this is, is that maybe I'm getting this psychically, but look, uh, when you're got a song stuck in your head and it's your ex's favorite song. Uh, Okay, so, or it's your uh, family member that maybe you're not talking to or something like that. Yeah, that that is that is them. They could be thinking about you. Um, doesn't mean you need to pick up the phone and call them. You know, it doesn't mean that. Don't think that that's what that means, you guys. It could, you know, yeah. uh, 
It's just like if your ex texts you, are you going to text back? That's a that's a decision you need to make, right? It's the same thing with energy. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that that uh, we didn't by your spirit guides. Yeah, just because it's energy doesn't mean it's sanctioned by your spirit guides. It doesn't mean that. It just means it's a different way to connect with you, in my opinion. Right. I get a lot of songs. <laughs> I do. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> right i get a lot of songs too yeah no, the only time i got a song for my ex was it turns out they were going they had a medical a, a medical emergency oh wow and i didn't i was mad because i was like trying to get my head with your song this <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, was actually in 911 situation like oh i feel so bad but anyway yeah don't think it just because it's energy that it's some blessed thing it's not believe me it's not uh, yeah i wanted to ask this last question about the stone spirit says uh have any clients experienced future lives which is a great question i've had one and the incredible thing is, is it was my mom really that is incredible um, I will say it took nine times to get her to go into hypnosis and that, and, you know, we had the conversation about sessions always go how they have to go. And finally, when it did happen, I asked like, why, why the nine times? And they were like, she just needs to learn how not to worry about everybody else. Cause she was more worried about me being successful in doing it. It's when I first started pretty much, but she went to a future life and I, I mean, she does healing work, but I just, I was really shocked because it validated so much of what I had actually read in Dolores Cannon's books. Like she was on it. And it's important to point out future lifetimes are possibilities. They're not set in stone. And so we're always shifting all the time. So um, what she saw was, I'll preface by saying, wasn't a thing and i don't think we're in that going even in that direction but she she was on the planet it was very red um i thought maybe she was on mars she described having on the space suit she was a male she was doing research um she actually had been tasked with doing in the planet was actually earth after nuclear destruction so she was tasked with the project of finding out how to bring the earth back to life and everything else i had her like it was just it was so weird to having it come out of your mom and i i said you know where do you stay do you live somewhere and she was like i'm the only one on the planet and i said well can you go to where you stay and she's like okay i'm there and i said how did you get there and she's like i just thought myself there and i said okay um which is the case outside of this experience we think and it happens oh, right. um and she was looking at this white structure that was like lobulous, but it was solid. And she started describing how she was the structure and the structure was her. And I said, what does that mean? And she's like, it's because I created it with my mind because I needed a place to stay. Wow. And then I asked her to go inside. And again, she thought herself inside, there's nothing in there. Um, I said, well, what, where's all, you know, how do you survive? And she's like, I just think it. And then it disappears when I don't need it anymore. Wow. Um, so the long story short is she did eventually um, was successful in the research and brought, she was like, ended up at the end of her life being sitting by this tropical waterfall and all this different stuff. And everyone was happy. And I asked her, I said, um, are you happy? Are you proud of what you did? And she's like, no, I'm content. And I said, well, why? I, I would be happy. And she's like, I, this is my mission. I, I finished my mission. That's what I needed to do. And I said, so what's going to happen? Are people going to come back to the earth? And she's like, yes. And I said, how are they going to get there? And she said, well, buy ships and everything else. And I said, oh, are you excited? And she was like, oh, I'm not going to stay. I'm, this is the end of my life. I'm going to leave. And I said, so you don't actually die. And she said, no, my time's over. I, I'm going to go back to spirit. That's, I came what I needed to do. Wow. And that's your mom. That was my mom. Wow. So, um, after that, I asked her herself, I was like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> 
And they said, and this was so interesting, we all have this ability that we just don't realize it. She has the ability, it's actually really awakened within her. She's able to travel throughout time. So she had actually taken herself into that lifetime to experience it in order to show her she had the ability. So it really wasn't okay. a future was life. It was a simulation. It was I to show her. Was a simulation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's fascinating because in this physical manifestation of her soul in this particular lifetime, you said she gets very worried about everybody and she's very uh, like focused on the 3d yeah that's just that's a continuing struggle and it, it also she had to pass lifetime where she was a powerful healer and um people go to see her for healing and she was in the city and to a uh, very powerful um married couple wealthy couple their son was sick they brought him to see her and the child died so she was exiled in story yep yeah so it it's dramatically tremendously impacted in how how much faith she has in herself and what mm -hmm. she can do and her abilities mm -hmm. um it's frustrating but i know it's her <laughs> it's her her path to do but um i think that was also to show her like you you are so much more than you you believe you are in this life so That's that was the only things to learn about your own mom yeah yeah it was i learned stuff about myself too unexpectedly so it was it was kind of a it was an interesting session that least. is a trip wow i never even thought about doing those sessions on your own family yeah i thought it would be easier but it, it's no. not no mm -mm. i, I no. can imagine it wouldn't be easier. there's too much stuff there's too much stuff <laughs> there's, there's too much stuff and you're still trying to battle your ego because you're the facilitator yeah. so you're not completely out of it you're not you know you're not uh you're still very much uh in your ego um yeah wow um so jason is in colorado he's currently on the western slope if you guys are in colorado you understand what that means but mm -hmm. he might be on the eastern slope at some point so um just reach out to him and he can yeah help you understand where he's at yeah, definitely. I I love doing what I do and helping. So that's why I'm here, partially. <laughs> partially nice. So you do this full time then? I yeah, the QHHT, and then I mean, talking about you know we get the nudge to jump off the cliff, and then it's kind of opened up pathways for me to accepting well. I guess accepting my abilities in other ways and other Psychic, things. Other... Mediumship, teaching, yeah. um, writing, all those things. Yeah. So my budding and growing has been actually kind of through YouTube and nice. Kevin Lewis and you know, he's here. So um I yeah. I wouldn't be here without <laughs> well we have a great we have a great community don't we i mean yeah. that's, that's what this is all about it's it's really kind of like the little oasis in the desert uh we're all this little community that really supports each other which i really enjoy yeah yeah i it's 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 supportive and it's really supportive in ways that i i it's the good good side of technology and you know getting to connect with like-minded people and um doing with doing with technology what we're supposed to be doing um because that's no accident that we have this type of information and ability that's right exactly now so, right. yeah that's exactly right this is no accident none of this none of this is is an accident uh the fact that you're watching this video no accident the fact that you watched it to the end no accident. Uh, there's <laughs> messages. Your guides are like, uh, you know, jumping on to send you some kind of aha moment. And maybe something somebody said in the chat, maybe something, something that Jason said, or I said, you know, just, it's going to stick with you. That's yeah. all synchronicities. Um, yep. And I think uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, everybody's here. I really appreciate you guys for joining us and all the moderators and mm -hmm. Jason, so you're in like, are you, so you're doing readings out of Grand Junction right now or? 
I do those online. Um, and then I, I developed something. It's been a process. It's um, kind of using the knowledge I've gained through QHHC sessions in terms of healing. And I also have learned that I can tap into lifetimes when necessary with people. Nice. That was a process. Um, I'd be doing sessions with people and it was really, really challenging for me in the beginning because I was actually visualizing and there with them. So it was pretty, I was taking on more than I needed to. Yeah, but yep. now that I'm aware of that more, it, it I can use that as types of like talking about someone's physical symptoms online um, with the knowledge that I gained through QHHT, how to understand the body, what spirit guides are trying to communicate with you um, and what needs to be done. So um, it, it's not QHHT, but it's kind of the culmination of my abilities with knowledge and everything else. So okay. um, that's another thing that I do. So. so you do that online. So mm -hmm. that's available to anybody anywhere in the world. Um, yeah. And that's sort of like more physical healing? Or I mean, it's, it's starting... Healing? Yeah, it's starting at the with the acknowledgement that every every physical symptom most of the time is a message. Um, the other times, it's usually sometimes past life traumas, other things like that. I get kind of tap in and get guidance in terms of, oh my God, this is past life, um, seeing lifetimes, and then also, you know, if we're experiencing it in the physical, in the now, there's a reason why, and it's usually because we haven't gotten the message before. So. Um, and so it's the thing with the QHHC healing just in general and this type of healing, we think it's some type of miraculous thing all the time, but it's really just a matter of understanding the core of what that message is. And once we know the message, that's when the healing actually begins. It's our body, we can communicate and say, okay, so I, I know I'm carrying this grief around in my chest about the life I could have had if I had made this one decision, I recognize it now. I need to let it go. And just that very acknowledgement and statement is where healing our body's like, oh, okay. She got the message. She doesn't have to carry this around anymore. Exactly. It's true, you guys. I swear it's absolutely true. And it can be like that. Um, but it can also take a lot longer. And, and the, the thing yeah. is to be gentle with yourself. If you start judging yourself, why can't I do it faster? Why can't? you're slowing yourself down. You're, you're putting, you're riding the brake on your own um, kind of development or health or whatever. But I want to, I want to make it, I want to be clear. So you offer this type of session over the phone or via zoom or something. That's correct. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and do you offer the QHHT in person? Somewhere? In person. Okay. Where yeah. do you offer the in-person QHHT? Just saying, um, well, Grand Junction, I, I've trapped and traveling. Okay. Sometimes I um, travel to Denver and Boulder, and okay. I've had a couple okay. people traveling here. So, um, okay. so if yeah. you guys contact him, this is what I keep saying. The best thing to do is just to contact him and have a conversation, and he can tell you what he does, and you guys can decide what's the best thing yeah. for you. Um, <laughs> And, and if there's a few of you on the other side, like on Den in Denver or Colorado Springs, you know, maybe he can get a few of you guys together to do on in one weekend or something like that. Yeah. But it seems like there's a lot of flexibility here. I would just contact him and uh, connect because I think that the one thing, you guys, is that the reason this community is here is spirit is trying to give us all resources, right? This video was free. This is a resource, right? But there are so many healers in the chat. There are psychics and mediums in the chat. You're surrounded by people. Um, so take advantage, right? Take advantage and save up your money or ask spirit. Ask spirit to provide you with the money and see what happens. Tell spirit, I really want to get an, a healing done. Can I get some money in my account? Now, <laughs> here's the thing. If you believe, if you believe that you're not going to get money, that you're not supposed to have money, money's hard to get. If you believe that I'm just a person who doesn't make a lot of money, well, then no, spirit cannot give you something. You're, re you're not answering the door, y'all. You don't believe it's possible. Believe it's possible and then ask for it and it will come. I promise you, I've seen it with me. I've seen it with my clients. 
fix your own attitude, fix your own thought processes, and then ask for it. And boom, you'll be, you'll be going to be, you're just going to be gobsmacked at how it shows up. And just think of it as, I mean, this is something I still struggle with. Just, you know, spirit always focuses on, it's not the bad relationships we see in terms of greed and everything else. It, it is an energetic vehicle to it through which we can better ourselves. And so if we're asking for it in a way that's not, oh my God, I need this or else I'm going to die, but I need this for my own growth and my own you know, guidance. It's a lot easier to see it that way if if you're not one to you know, <laughs> panhandle or be begging for money from your spirit team. Um, it's important just to see it. Oh as my that. God, did you just say those words? Panhandle or beg money from my spirit team? Oh my God, okay. Um, okay, so what, I, I totally get it because I have this same thing like with worth. I, I totally get it. I totally get it. I've really struggled with that. Actually, in 2023, it was a really uh, breakout year for me, but I have really had to face a lot of self-worth things that kept showing up in my life in weird ways. And I had to really just get over myself. So yeah, I'm telling you guys, and, and this is just my personal opinion, but um, if you if you want more abundance, there's nobody cutting that spigot off at you. You're the only one with your foot on the hose of prosperity. You're the only one. Spear guys don't care about money. They don't care. They, they care about your soul. They care about your health. They care about your soul light, your happiness. They don't care about money. Um, so if you want to ask for money, ask for money. If you want money, get money. Uh, change your attitude. Is money, do people that have money, are they jerks? Are they assholes? You know what I mean? What is your opinion about money? Do some work around this, guys. Can I ever have money? Am I worth having money? Am I worth having love? Am I worth being loved? Ask yourself that question, you guys, in the chat. Am I worth being loved? What does it feel like for me to be loved? We're talking some big shit. That's going to stop all of y'all in your tracks. Money and love. But you got to be worth it. You got to be, you got to say, I'm worth love. I'm worth money. And I, I, I think that those of us who are here to help and those of us who are here to heal and help, you know, do the work is actually, I don't want to say the most important are those who have the most <laughs> issues, I yeah. think, yeah. surrounding like money and things like that, just because we want to give everything away. Yep. Um, I, I know a, a practitioner, she was like charging very minimally for sessions and someone's higher self actually kind of stepped in and stopped the session and told her, you need to charge more. <laughs> wow. Wow. See? So even spirit recognizes, you know, it's not about wealth, but it's about the exchange of energy and what you're doing. Exchange of energy. This yeah. is what the guides want to say all the time. It's equal energy exchange, equal energy exchange. And if you're not valuing yourself, then you're letting other people take advantage of you. And then you're not getting an equal energy exchange. And, I, and look, listen, guys, we're all spiritual, but we're not monks. Nobody is feeding us. Nobody is clothing us. <laughs> we still have to pay for our own, you know, electricity, our own rent, our own clothes, our own cars. We, we live in a 3D money filled, money required environment. End of story. And I just really want to challenge the idea that if somebody has a shit ton of money, that they're not spiritual or they're, or they're only in it for the money or they're all of a sudden they're, uh, you know, fake or something. Um, I think I, I want to challenge that. Cause I, I mean, I think you can be fake and poor. I think you can be fake and rich. I don't think it has anything to do with the money. Maybe money, maybe if money is what you're thinking about and it consumes you, then yeah, that's a problem, right? That's a, that's a problem. But all things in moderation and equal energy exchange, I think that um, it's, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be comfortable in this life. Yeah, the, 
I, I just just popped in from a session I had. I don't remember the context, but um, a higher self said, you know, one of the biggest judges of how much you trust in us is how many credit cards you have in your wallet. <laughs> what? Explain that. What? Because in their perspective, all we have to do is ask. We'll always have everything oh, we need. We're always provided for. And the biggest, you know, showing that we don't trust that is having a credit card. Because I had, a, it was actually a lady who had a lot of credit cards and she wanted to know if she was out of debt or if she would ever get out okay. of debt and how okay. to change that. Okay. And they, they said yeah. that. They are yeah. like. It's, it's the same thing with the phone. It's the same thing with the phone. They told me you guys would be 20 years further along to telepathy. This is a crutch. And, and you're right. It's like, so believing that you need all these credit cards is sort of, you know, supplanting in a way, uh, the fact that you can ask for abundance or you can be in alignment with a yeah. really, it's more like being in alignment. It's not asking because asking belies lack. But when you're in alignment with abundance, I and, and, and abundance is love. Abundance is a high vibration. So work on this, and then all mm -hmm. that other stuff is gonna fall right into place. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness. And forgiveness, forgiveness of yourself, forgiveness yeah. of others. Doesn't mean be a doormat. We're not saying be a doormat. That's not what we're saying. But it's really for you. Especially for giving yourselves. That's, I think, something Especially. that we forget Especially. to do is Especially. I'm not perfect. I don't have to be perfect. I don't deserve this because I, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's, we're hard on ourselves. Yeah. That's the earth. It's the dense weight of the earth. Yeah. So. And also, I can't have fun because uh, there's a war going on. Or I can't have fun because there's all this suffering. Okay, you're not really doing anything by not having fun uh, to help them. Um, honestly, I think the most powerful thing the spirit guides have said to me in recent memory is that as much as your light can shine, you know, given that we're human and things are up and down and, you know, whatever, but as much as your light can shine, even though there's some horrible thing happening to people wherever, we are their light that they see when they're coming out of the tunnel. You know, we always talk about, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Honey, that's you and me. That's us. We're the ones shining the light for them. So hold their light for them. Hold their light for those people that are suffering. Let, let me yeah. shine my bright a little brighter so that you can see us out here. So we can be those beacons of light for you. And then when you come out, honey, here's your light. You know, there's no reason yeah. to think I'm just depressed because everything is horrible. Well, sometimes it is horrible and sometimes we do get down. But let's not let it be a complete and total lifestyle. I, I got huge chills. Um <laughs> <laughs> But it's true. It goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning. It's like we 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 hold the light for ourselves when we, uh, and this is something that comes through all the time. Is we take life too seriously. We need to have some fun. We need to have some joy. We need to laugh. We need to lighten up because in it's that contagion. It's that you know it's contagious. It's infectious. The earth guy is waking up. That's actually our laughter is one of the most powerful healing energies that the earth can actually take in. And so the more we laugh, the more we heal the planet. So it really takes it to an old level of not feeling guilty about going out and having some fun because actually you're doing the work that we need to be doing right now, even though we don't see it, even though it's not part of our, you know, clock in and clock out. I've, I've had, I've had those types of clients where it's like, I just can't take the time to go right on the beach or to go play with my dog or anything else and higher selves have said if you need to think about this where you're clocking in to having fun and clocking out to you know as part of your work day that's then do it because you're doing something you're actually you are working um in a way that's sure. for higher purpose for yourself for everybody else the planet and the universe so laugh 
<laughs> my God, that's the best advice. I love that about the earth, man. That made my whole night. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wow. They, they, they said that. They said, Gaia, it's the vibration that I needs. Love that. that makes sense. Yeah. The laughter and sense. the joy. Oh, my God. It makes sense. And With we that, think we need to be serious and cold and nasty all the time, and it's yeah, the, and depressed, the and it, it, it is it's difficult here. This is a difficult planet, and we're in a difficult time frame. So I get it. Uh, yeah. You might have to work a little harder to laugh, but you know, it's like you <laughs> just said, you know, clock in and clock out. Make it. Yeah. This is my fun. I'm gonna have fun. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. And they say it's okay if you do some overtime. Do it. <laughs> you have approved fun over time. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Well, on that note, we are exactly at two hours. And I swear to God, I don't know where the time went. Yeah. Uh, if you're still watching, thank you so very much for staying to the end. You are awesome. Um, and wow, thank you to everybody. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you to all the wonderful channels that dropped in. And don't forget that Jason has his own YouTube channel. He also has his website. All his information is in the description of this video as well. And uh, many of the moderators have been putting it in the chat. So yeah. I appreciate that as well. Thank you. And uh, maybe you. we'll do this again sometime. It'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be great. I would love to. So definitely. I love that, Sharon Sipe. Hi to the lur people lurking. <laughs> Sharon, <laughs> Sharon Sipe is calling y'all out, you lurkers. <laughs> I'm a worker too. Half the time I'm on y'all's channels. Y'all don't even know it. Okay. <laughs> now, now Sharon's going to be calling me out. Like she's psychic. If Susan is here <laughs> lurking. Wow. All right. We love you lurkers. Lurkers. Yeah. Do not I lurk. Oh. I yeah, admit you it. Lurk too, right. I mean, you're wearing lurkers. <laughs> lurkers are fine. We like lurkers. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so very much. Take really good care of yourselves. And uh, we'll see you again real soon, okay, everybody? Take good care. Bye, y'all.